Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair, please proceed. So, um, let me bring this over here. Okay. Seeing that, um, that our board members are here, uh, I want to call to order the Thursday, February 24th, 2020 meeting of the SAC Metro Finance and Audit Committee. Where, and will the uh, clerk please call a roll? Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, Director Wood, I see you here. Present. Uh, Director Jones. Present. Valley, turning, it Present. turning it over to you. Thank you. The uh, uh, public opportunity to discuss matters of public interest within com the committee's scope, including items on or not on the agenda are provided. Are there any speakers? I do not believe we have any speakers this evening. Uh, there's only one attendee. Station 31, you will have the ability to unmute yourselves if there's anything you'd like to present to the board at this time. That is negative. Um, Hearing nothing, we'll, uh, we'll continue to the consent agenda. Sure, I'll move the consent. Okay. And do I have a second? As soon as I find that unmute, I second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Aye. Jones? Aye. Rizali? Aye. Passes. Moving then to the presentation items finance report through December 31. 2021 CFO O'Toole. Good evening, uh, Chair and, and uh, Directors and Chief Arms. Uh, tonight's bi monthly fiscal presentation highlights the overall uh, fiscal trends in order to monitor the financial health of the district. Um, Presentation is drawn from the Finance Committee report through December 31 of 2021, which was provided with your agenda. All right, so here we have the cash balance trends as of December 31. Uh, this, the trend line shows a historical pattern where we spend into the dry period um, when we're borrowing from the county as necessary and uh, until the property tax revenue transfers boost our cash reserves back up. Uh, you can see that in November, the uh, on the green line there, the second to last square, uh, second to last square or dot there, um, is about 11 million below the 2021 level. And in December, the difference is a uh, is a whole uh, 96 million relative to that the dot up above, and uh, 96 million. Rest assured that this is a timing difference. And between reported revenues and reported cash, as you'll see on the next slide, and now that the county is transferring property taxes to us, um, if you look back at the cash balance trends for the prior four years. I just wanted to mention this is this slide is a little more typical where we have the um, the the, uh, the revenues coming in actually in uh, in the following month, not as you see uh, in the month of January, as opposed to where you see it last year, they came in December. That was this last year was a little bit of an anomaly. Um, and uh, as you'll see in your report, most of the cash accounts are doing well or better than 2021. Uh, it's the property tax line that pulls us down. So the next slide is general operating fund revenue uh, total revenues. Uh, so let's look at looking at revenues now. The this slide shows us still tracking closely with expected general fund revenues after six months. The uh, there are three lines on this chart, all tracking closely together. The blue line is the budgeted revenues. The green line is prior year revenues, and the red line is current year. So you can see how the um, the budgeted and current are tracking very closely. Uh, we've now received about 129 million or 51.7% of projected revenues. That's 8 million more than last year at this time. So we'll take another look at, at our next slide and look at what other, other main revenue sources, medic cost revenues. 
Um, let's see. Again, we're tracking pretty closely that the budget line, the blue and the red lines are pretty close. Uh, the green line below is prior revenues. Total anticipated annual revenue is 42.9 million over the course of the year there. And we're slightly ahead of schedule with 22.9 million after six months, and we're 51.9 percent of revenues after 50 percent of the fiscal year. Overall, medic revenues are over 12 percent, are 12 percent over last year after six months, and it's mainly due to COVID related quarantine that suppressed ambulance transports last year. Next slide general operating fund total expenditures. Uh, after six months, general fund expenditures relative to our budget inched above the budget target. Uh, and are higher than last year. Expenditures were at 53.4% of, of budget and 7% or 8.7 million higher than last year at this point. Uh, this slide is a leading indicator of, of uh, sort of the mid-year adjustments and that we'll be talking about in the next presentation. Next slide is general operating fund salary and benefits expense. You can see that after six months, labor costs are, uh, are pulling away from the budget number now at 2.8% above the level anticipated by December. Uh, so that's the red, a uh, little bit above the blue line there. Employee wages are well ahead, um, mainly because of constant staffing callbacks are way up. Constant staffing callbacks are the overtime costs generated when a suppression staff member must can come in to cover for another staff, staff member who is out uh, due to an unplanned absence. Um, after 50% of the year, constant staffing had consumed 73.4% of the plan budget or 13.1 million of the 17.9 million budgeted for constant staffing callbacks. Some of that increase is also due to deployments, um, as well as staffing shortages caused by things like increasing days in COVID leave during this time. Uh, next slide, general operating fund reserves. So a quick look at this, we're following, of course, not unlike last year on this, this slide, uh, reserves at the end of December were higher than last year by 7 million. Uh, the green line is, above, is 7 million higher than, the, than the, the red line there at the very end, the very end of the green line. Next slide, the CERT fund as of October 31, this is actually December uh, 31, I can update that slide, December 31, 2021. Um, this is not a cash fund and monies in this fund trust can only be used to pay future retiree health premiums. We have a balance of 75.9 um, million showed up as being made of contributions over the life of the participation in the fund. So while both the contributions and earnings have grown in recent years, it's always important to keep in mind the overall liability, uh, which is 243.9 million for the current year, which means we're about 30% funded today. And our takeaways after six months ending December 31, 2021. See, um, the cash balance dipped significantly after six months, uh, mainly due to the timing of the property tax receivables and the $96 million swing. Talked about um, spending inched over budget. We're now about $7 million ahead of over where we were in December last year, at December end. Next, labor costs are trending ahead of budget, particularly in, in constant staffing callbacks over time. And uh, we're after about 50% of the year, again, we're about 13.1 million of the 17.9 million allocated for that spending category. And finally, general operating fund reserve accrued above the budget level. And it's now about 7 million over where last year. So this uh, is a presentation item only, and my recommendation is to receive and file. And open any questions? Yes, uh, CFO Atul. Good evening. This is Gay Jones, and um, uh, okay. Um, I had a a broader, a, a broad type hundred thousand foot view question, and then a very specific one. The very specific one is on uh, in our little packet on page five. It talked about admin expenses for PERS, I believe, and I just wanted to make sure it was a. a 17920. Is that paid to PERS or is that our administrative cost? That's paid to PERS. PERS. And is that 17,000 or do we add three zeros to that? That's 17,000. Okay. A little worried about that one. <laughs> then um, now, looking through the uh, terrific charts and uh, all the information that was in our packets, and I really appreciate uh, every staff's effort to get all that uh, accumulated and presented. 
Well, we talked about, okay, if our budget's about 283 million, are we going, how much are we going to exceed that projected budget total? General fund, capital improvement, all, the whole works. Uh, uh, so the, uh, how much would we exceed it? Um, I'm gonna make sure I understand the question. If we did nothing or, um, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, uh, this is a uh, mid year is a reevaluation of where we are, and so uh, another way to phrase that would be, uh, in total, how much um, uh, transfer in between funds are we going to have to do? So that's an excellent lead in for my next presentation. But I can I, I can uh, oh, well I can I can wait as well. I don't want to usurp your. <laughs> your presentation. Go ahead, Mr. O'Toole. Thanks. It's okay. I can just do go right into the next presentation. Um, so, uh, good evening again. This is a mid year budget presentation uh, for the 21 22 budget. And uh, to, to provide an, uh, an overview for you of the, what's happening, and we'll I'll point to that number that you asked uh, uh, Director Jones a moment ago. Uh, let me take a minute just to talk about how we developed the mid year budget first. So, the mid year budget adjustments are based on actual results for December 31, 2021. And with projections are for the remainder of the fiscal year. So first six months actual, next six months projections. Uh, we have updated some of the spending through January in order to refine our budget shortfall and solutions, which we'll be talking about momentarily. Uh, Mid-year budget will be presented to the full board on March 10th. As noted, um, without action uh, to correct the course, it's noted on your slide there, noted without action to correct the course, we'd be about 10.4 million short by, the, by June 30th. So if we did nothing, that is the situation we'd be in with the general operating fund. Um, and so that's out of the 241 million generally generating the operating fund budget. So the shortfall is somewhere around 4% or 3.5% if you're counting um, all funds. Uh, closing that gap requires reducing expenditures and aug augmenting the general fund. Part of that augmentation is transferring available balances from other funds to the general fund. So I'll specifically mention those in a, in a few moments. But first, I want to talk about how do we get here. I'm sure you know, no one's happy to hear that there's a $10.4 million shortfall, but um, kind of explain what happened. So the uh, if I had to pick kind of three main drivers that would, would capture more than the $10.4 million shortfall, it would be these three in, on the slide there. So the GMT, the Ground Emergency, Tra Ground Emergency Management Transport. Uh, <laughs> medical. Ground Medical. There you Excuse go. Me, wrong. Uh, ground emergency medical transport, thank you. Uh, the payments received from the state of California for transporting, for transporting insured um, Medi-Cal beneficiaries, it's a three million shortfall. So during the uh, mid-year development, the finance staff go through the process of re-verifying revenue assumptions. And in doing so, um, we talked to our, our consultant who helped us with this, helped us with this program. And uh, we learned that the, the, the State Department of Healthcare Services has, is making changes to the program and so the payments that we expected this fiscal year are actually coming in next fiscal year. So we, we, we're, we're going to have to shift those over into next fiscal year, those revenues into next fiscal year. The next is constant staffing callbacks, uh, which I just talked about in the last presentation. So this is overtime payments to suppression staff called in to cover for staff on an unplanned absence. Um, the cost surges when you have a high number of staff out of the office on deployments or some form of sick leave, whether that be um, COVID related or it's quarantine or taking care of a family member. Any, any of that nature. And um, you know, with COVID and an apparent decline in the district bringing on nearly 50 new firefighters this year, it's hoped that this number will actually will decline significantly next year when we have more staff to cover those absences. And the third major category is services and supplies. So also materials and services is up by that 2.8 million um, and that includes fuels, which we all see prices are going up there, but also an important one is one well, is a $1.6 million AMR contract, which is not included in the um, it was not included in the enacted budget in September. 
uh, that contract cost at 1.6 million is more than offset actually by the revenues that are generated by those transports carried out uh, by the AMR personnel. So altogether, you can see that these three categories are again more than the 10.4 million uh, shortfall. And as we'll hear about, uh, there are expenditure savings and higher than expected revenues and some line items that uh, fill in the gaps. So this next slide, I know it's very, uh, very um, detailed and there's quite a bit here. It is in your packet. I just want to kind of, it has the, the most information on the general fund, which I'm not going to delve into, but I just want to kind of introduce you to the page and just make clear that what is on there and what it tells us. So it tells us what happened to the general fund since the final budget was enacted. On the left uh, hand column are the revenues, expenditures, and uh, transfers. On the second column, is the final budget numbers as the board approved in September. The third column is the mid year revised numbers. So the $10.4 million shortfall I mentioned, if you can see it is like smack dab in the middle of the, uh, um, of the page there with the parentheses around it. Um, and shows that we are, uh, that our expenditures are exceeding revenues by that amount. The last column is the variance. You can see the difference between the mid year and the final. And the bottom line shortfall is shown on this page as negative 1.2 million the bottom of the mid-year uh, column one, actually 1.195. And that is the that is the gap that uh, we, we will close um, and, I'll, and I'll explain it in a moment. Uh, when staff were finalizing the mid-year report just last Friday, we concluded that the gap would, would need to get covered by general funds reserves. Now, however, after this uh, mid-year presentation was drafted, we identified two other factors that will need to get, uh, need to get uh, resolved before we go to the full board. And I'll explain those two right now. The first is we uh, determined that a sum approaching 1.2 million may be transferable from the capital facilities fund. And the second negotiation with uh, local 522 are headed towards, uh, maybe headed towards an increase. So that, those two factors will need to get built in and, and, and when we go to the full board, we'll, we'll, we'll rectify those. So the net effect, maybe we still need to borrow from the general fund, um, we just not need to clarify how much that is. So to uh, focus on the revenue part of that table we just saw for a moment. So the total general fund revenue increase is 567,000. Uh, and it brings us up to 240.5 million relative to the final budget. Uh, state, uh, some of the notable changes are state and federal COVID grants received and anticipated increased re revenues relative to the final budget by 1.7 million. Uh, we have 3 million in GEMT revenues that were deferred to next fiscal year. And in a related development, uh, the district is supposed to get reimbursed for hosting the GEMT program for other participants in, participants in California. Uh, because of the delay, we're anticipating that those revenues will not come in completely. So maybe a $1 million decrease relative there. Um, let's see, Metacost recoveries, we saw a $2.6 million increase, which is partially offset by that um, increase in the AMR contract cost I mentioned before. And property taxes are a little bit higher. We usually get a, a modest change at mid-year and about 200,000 more um, likely due to approved reassessments and that kind of thing. Moving on to the expenditure side, most importantly, most significantly, I should say labor costs. So we saw an $8 million increase in the labor budget bill and I'm bringing uh, it up to 211.8 million. Uh, of, course, of course, the constant staffing callbacks is 8.6 million of that. Uh, we saw the um, additional vacancy savings of, of uh, 1 million. Also sick leave buybacks were higher than, than forecast in the final budget by 400,000. And deployment revenue, um, or the funds received from the state emergency services when we, when we post staff um, to wildfires and such things and, and their equipment uh, declined by, by about 800,000. Now that was partially offset by a 650,000 reduction in labor expense. A little less revenue, but also less cost. And other general fund expense and the notable comments, I mentioned the services and supplies. Uh, it's a net increase of 1.7 and gets us up to 34.5 million. It includes the ambulance service contract I mentioned, 1.6 million. Diesel and gas together are up about 225,000 over what we thought they would be when we had the formal budget enacted and equivalent for approximately 50 firefighter positions, which was not included in the final budget. It's about 440,000. And that's a taxes, licenses, debt service related expenditures just ticked up 118,000 total of 4.6 million. And offsetting those additional services and supplies with your cost of uh, increases, uh, which originally, again, 
total 2.8 million were reductions to most divisions budgets across the board reductions totaling uh, around $1 million. So in terms of the general fund summary, uh, the recommended mid year adjustments to close the projected $10.4 million deficit are, you know, we're going to recognize those 200,000 in, in increased property taxes. Uh, we have increased intergovernmental rent revenues of 1.6 million. Uh, we would transfer from the IGT fund 4.7 million. We also transfer from the lease properties fund balance of 1.2 million. Uh, transfer from the general fund reserves of 1.2 million. And that's there, but just keeping in mind that we have these few other factors of the uh, MOU, MOU resolution, as well as uh, funds that are transferable from the uh, capital fiscal, capital financing fund. And then miscellaneous adjustments of 1.5 million. The projected reserve balance, as you can see there's 32.5 million, or 15%. Uh, this again is a presentation only, and my recommendation is to receive the file and welcome your questions. I guess what I would add in is that uh, this is Dave's first year of going through and, and doing mid-year, and it is a year, obviously, where we look at $10 million, and what do we do as far as being able to, to close the gap? So I want to say thank you to Dave and his staff for being able to sit down and do that together. Uh, over the last two weeks, we've spent a lot of time together. Uh, and as you saw in there, as we went through a number of areas of projects or programs, and what are the things that we were able to do to be able to close the deficit? Um, as always, there's always those things that we look at doing um, and be able to defer those into next year's budget or prioritizing and making sure some of the projects that get started move forward. Uh, I think one of those that is on there is obviously we're hiring uh, 46 new individuals as firefighters and we have to have the appropriate turnout and gear and and while they won't need that during the academy today's time with supply chain and stuff we have to be able to order that today so we have the best equipment available to be able to go out on the street thank you dave uh, mr chair uh, director Zali, this yes. is Sid Gate. i have a quick question here so uh in the broadest general terms, uh, we were coming up um, with a need for 10, 10 and a half million dollars, and we were able to rectify that. But in the end, we have to take uh, what is it, 1.6 million out of our reserve? Is that correct, Mr. O'Toole? The presentation tonight was 1.2, but we're 1.2 um, for the factor we just mentioned. For the the resolution of the MOU and what may be borrowable from the capital financing fund. Okay, I don't quite understand that. Part of it's uh, the the audio is clipping just a tad. So we have one one point two that we're going to have to take out of reserves. But you said there can be additional costs. Could you say that again, just a little bit more slowly, please? Sure. My apologies. The we anticipate additional costs related to the what happens with the MOU and what gets resolved there. Offsetting those costs would be um, funds that are transferable from the capital financing fund, which are about 1.1 million. Okay, thank you. I think in, in direct terms, one of the good things or, or bad things of the time right now is that we have uh, purchases online for apparatus that will not show up this year. So at the beginning of the year, we have three engines, a truck, multiple ambulances that we know at the beginning of the year we wanted to buy. Our expectation was that they would be completed and they would be delivered. So it's still out there in the order, but the delivery time has been pushed out. So there won't be any payment that will be due on those until next year's budget. So we're not decreasing purchases or anything. It's just that we know that the delivery of them because of the, the demand that is out there, it's going to be above and beyond. So uh, as Dave said, that's about 1.1 million that uh, we will be able to defer into next year's and keep on track with our apparatus replacement schedule. Hmm. Well, no, that's, uh, I guess that's good news, Chief. <laughs> but I am concerned that we're uh, taking some money out of this uh, capital facilities fund. 
because uh, later on in our uh, regular meeting, we're gonna hear a great presentation about developing those things and projects. And I'm a little concerned that we're, uh, um, that we're taking, we're already transferring funds out of CFF and uh, I'll be interested in future work that we do to uh, get that monies back into that particular fund. Thank you. Well, that is, this is for our apparatus that we're taking it out of. So we're not, all we're doing is delaying the payment to a later point in time. Okay, well, oh. you know, I, I can talk, I can talk to, uh, Chief, I can talk to you and, and Dave offline. It just, I thought he said there was one point capital facilities fund that, that we're gonna do, some, we're gonna do some transfers out of there to, uh, to balance out this budget. So um, anyway, uh, I can I can follow up offline. Thank you. I think we lost Randy. I think we lost Randy. Oliver the bullpen. I have lots to do. Yeah, I know. It's, just, it's the best part of being a reliever. <laughs> um, uh, Gay, anything further? Uh, I have no further questions. Thank you. And in that case, uh, we can adjourn. All right, thanks. So we'll all just stay on this line for our general meeting, correct? Thank you.